This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening. I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's day two of the governing Progressive Liberal Party's National Convention at the Malia Resort on Cable Beach in New Providence. Delegates from throughout the country are attending the parley under the theme, Build and Power Forward Together. Last night, delegates heard from several cabinet ministers, including Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darvel. Shashina Roll reports. The Progressive Liberal Party breaking record as thousands attended the 52nd National Convention. Now those who could not fit on the inside assembled right here on the outside. Many of them say they are eager to hear more about the party's message going into the general election and they want to know more about the way forward. Excited party supporters were dressed in their PLP colors, many holding up three fingers displaying the party sign others holding up signs representing the various constituencies and showing their love for the Progressive Liberal Party, the party that has been regarded by officials as the only stable one in the country. Minister for Grand Bahama Dr. Michael Darvel says over 600 persons traveled from Grand Bahama to share in this significant event. We have uh, tremendous support here from the island of Grand Bahama. We've been bringing in flights uh, from Sunday night and we have a flight also tomorrow. So I think we have here on the island of Nass, New Providence, uh, some 355 delegates who will be a part of the democratic process as a result of uh, the leadership race. And we look forward to resolving this problem in a unified fashion so that we could come together and focus on the 2017 general election. Darvel also addressed those in attendance on investment and development in Grand Bahama. And to assure them that we are on the right path and we're moving in the right directions for the resurgence of the Grand Bahama economy. We know that Hurricane Matthew hit a blow to us, but we have a plan. And our plan, we believe, is a solid plan for the resurgence of our economy and to bring economic growth and development to the industrial and tourism sector. Oh, it's a convention without music. Entertainment was provided by Shabak. And Gino D, as well as international gospel artist Jonathan Nelson. Upon the party leader's entrance, he was met with a rousing standing ovation. Meanwhile, Minister of Tourism and Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama, Obi Wilshkum, and Assistant Secretary General of the PLP, Michelle Rackley, say they were impressed with the amount of young people in attendance. Oh, I'm absolutely encouraged. And look at the young people who are here from all over the country. They've come in large numbers. That tells you they appreciate what we do. All we need to ensure is that we reconnect and make sure they understand where we're going. We had a mandate that we're carrying out and we think we've done a good job. Now it's about the future. They want to know about their future. The FNM had their rally, the DNA of had theirs, and of course tonight they saw the true rally. They saw um, the nation builders, they saw speakers who's going to empower and build this Bahamas and a Bahamas where they want to be. Also attending the PLP's convention was FNM Member of Parliament for South Abaco, Edison Key, who says he's no stranger to PLP conventions and adds that he was also impressed by the thousands of persons who supported the 2017 convention. You listen to the rhetoric on the street, the PLP gone. You know, there's no chance for them to win again. But this is what I see here tonight. That tells me a different story. And that's why I came, so I could see and feel for myself what's taking place. What do you say to persons um, who may have a problem with you coming out here tonight and, and some of the naysayers in regards to that? They don't rule me. Nobody puts a leash on my neck. While Key was speaking with ZNS News, the party and nation's leaders spoke candidly to our news team about Key attending the convention. Because he said to me in the House of Assembly, who knows? I may just show up at your convention. That's what he said to me. And, and the fact of the matter is, he's a good friend. And all beyond politics, he's a good friend of myself, he's a good friend of the Deputy Prime Minister. We've always treated each other with respect. And that is the, that is the point. So I'm not, I really should not be surprised to see Edison Key here. He's just Edison Key. That's, that's a, I'm just telling them, that crew up in Abaco, they cannot put a leash on my neck and run me around like a little puppy. And that's what they don't like about me. What I believe, what I see, what I believe is right, 
it right. And yet nobody's going to change my mind. Now the Progressive Liberal Party's convention will carry on through Thursday. Party officials say for those persons wishing to attend, you can still register right here at the Malia Nassau Beach. Shashina Roll, ZNS Network News. Well, tonight's session begins at 8 o'clock and will be carried live on the ZNS radio and television network. PLB candidate Norris Bain refuting claims that Consular General to New York Forrester Carroll does not endorse him as the PLP's standard bearer in the Marco City constituency. Bain says a report from 2012 has been circulating recently on social media about Carroll taking issue with his nomination in 2012 to run for the FNM. But Bain says since then, he and Carroll have developed a good relationship and there is no tension between them article that you see circulating in the social media was an article written in March of 2012. Since that time, Forrest and I have talked like, oh my God, 20, 30 times. We've made amends. We've learned, we, and this is what a lot of Bahamians need to learn. That's why I talk about mature politics. We've made amends. We've talked like men and forgiven each other and moved on. Forrest the Carroll was very, very interest, instrumental in assisting me in bringing nearly uh, 70 kids last summer to uh, sing uh, for folks at the, at the United Nations, to sing in churches around the New York area and ensuring that everything went well with them, treated them to a dinner. And so there's absolutely no bad blood between Forrester Carroll and I. Bain says Carroll is a professional who fully endorses him. He says it is time for the country to now live above petty politics. We're trying to send a, a, a message of building people in this country and, and, and a message of telling young people that even if you, if you make a decision, respect people's decision. We have a right to choose. You know, I know, one good thing about me is I know who I am and I have the utmost respect for Forrest Carroll and I think I can speak for him on this occasion and say that he has the utmost respect for me. Because a major transportation provider on the island is making a big investment in the tourism sector. Today, H. Forbes Charter rolled out a new fleet of buses, and industry partners hope it is a sign of great things to come. Megan Shepard fills us in. I cover a special blessing ceremony held Wednesday morning for five new double-decker buses brought to the island by H. Forbes Charter. Bishop Godfrey Williams says that Hadley Forbes continues to have tremendous vision for the island. We know that where there is no vision, the people perish. And where there is no people, the opposite is truly the same. The vision perish and today we are ex experiencing on this grand occasion whereby Forbes Charter continue to stretch. President of the Grand Bahama Port Authority Ian Roll congratulating Forbes and his team for their continued success. He says Forbes is a role model that other business persons can follow. We should continuously think about reinventing ourselves and adapting to certain changes and also hard work. What we see here today didn't just happen. People look at the man Hadley Forbes and think that he has sudden success and think that everybody's just given it to him. No, I've been on trade missions with Hadley Forbes and I've seen this man in action. He's out there representing Grand Bahama, representing the product that he sells, forming relationships to cause business to happen for him. As Grand Bahama continues to rebound and tourists make their way back to the island, top tourism executives are commending Forbes for his commitment and investment in the industry. We need to improve our product and, and most important, we need to improve our service. And I think Mr. Forbes this morning take, is taking the lead in doing that. And we uh, congratulate him and support him wholeheartedly. What H. Forbes uh, Charter is doing is you really have to be a visionary in times like these. You can't um, make decisions based on the present circumstance. You have to see beyond this. And the fact of the matter is there has been improvement shown since the hurricane. So you have to be a visionary and you have to have confidence in the destination and actually be a true stakeholder 
by investing in the product like uh, Mr. Forbes has done. Um, this is really, a, I, I would say, a proud day for the transportation industry. Uh, Forbes is the leader in that industry. President of Freeport Insurance agents and brokers Lawrence Palmer also commending Forbes for his vision. It's so good to see persons like Hadley Forbes taking the initiative, investing in the tourism economy and the anticipation that it will grow. And I believe when we do things like that, that what we hope for will indeed come to pass. The buses along with the H. Forbes team were blessed by Bishop Williams. Megan Shepard, Seton S. Network News. Thanks, Megan. The Grand Bahama Port Authority is working to improve customer relations. Officials say residents' concerns are being addressed by way of a special online program. The Grand Bahama Port Authority is focused on keeping the city of Freeport clean while improving service to its customers. The See Click Fix app introduced by GBPA several months ago is helping to do just that. It's a live uh, GPS. It locates you um, um, live and it tells us what the issues are. We get it immediately, immediately. Once we get it, we acknowledge and send an email back to you, tell you that we have acknowledged the issue. And once it's fixed, we send you an email. Your matter has been fixed. And so help us, send us the information so we can get an idea of what your concerns are. City Manager Troy McIntosh explains how the app works. There's two forms you can actually submit queries or concerns. One on your mobile phone. If you have an iPhone or Samsung's phone, you go into the Samsung store and you can uh, download the app for free. That's one. Then two on your computers at home. Go to cclickfix.com, um, open it up, log in or sign up. and once you go in, a lot of it is just select, drop down menu, select, and click. You could also send it to us anonymously. We don't have to know who's sending it once we get the concern and request. And so it's a, it's a user-friendly item. You don't have to fill out anything in terms of writing. We've added all, we have it all set up for you. Select whatever the item is, request type is, whether it's potholes, debris, whatever it is. We can get it and then filter it to the relevant parties. McIntosh says this online feature can also help the port to address the problem of illegal dumping. There's a component in there where if you see someone illegal dumping, you can take a video. You don't have to approach them, take your video, snap a picture, again, send it to us anonymously and we begin to move forward with it. He's encouraging residents to take advantage of this opportunity to make their concerns known. I think we probably have somewhere around about 5 to 8 percent participation. We would like that to be higher. I mean, this is an app we use internally as well to collect information, so you may go on and, and see it. One of the things that we have done also, if Sabrina, you send a, an issue, and I go in and send the same issue, the system recognizes that that issue was already sent in, and it will flag it as a duplicate. Now, while the app is primarily for GBPA service customers, McIntosh says residents and private subdivisions can also use it, as the information will be forwarded to their private developers. In news from the court, Curtis Evans, seen wearing the black shirt, was sentenced today to 28 months behind bars after pleading to one count of housebreaking, two counts of burglary, and four counts of stealing from a dwelling house. Evans appeared before Deputy Chief Magistrate Debbie Ferguson yesterday. Joshua Storr, dressed in the red shirt, pled guilty to two counts of housebreaking and was sentenced to three years at the Bahamas Department of Corrections. He later pled guilty to an additional four counts of housebreaking and was sentenced to 21 months behind bars and fined $1,000 or in default spent an additional year at the Bahamas Department of Corrections. All of the charges relate to a offenses that occurred in the Freeport and Lucaya areas over the last three months. Stay with us, there's more news after this.